Hey YouTubers, Jeff Perry here with the Better Than Average TV and uh, this is one of the parts of our fireworks video. Today we're going to be talking remote firing systems. Honestly, I can't think of any other way to really spruce up your fireworks show than to have it started with a little remote control like this. You know, if you're throwing a backward, backyard fireworks show, and in my case, I'm throwing it right here in the front yard, um, you, you know, you definitely you bust something like this out, you're not having to get a lighter out and go chase these uh, mortars or cakes or anything like that. You're starting it, you're queuing it up just like this. So, today we want to talk remote firing system. Well, what is remote firing system? Um, Kind of the thing I remember when I was a kid, uh, I don't know if any of you guys ever played with the Estes rockets, but you had like a little launch pad and a remote, but you had these one-time use fuses uh, that were like basically an e-fuse or electronic fuse that went into a little um, rocket engine that was a one-time use as well. But That's kind of what it reminds me of, but basically I want to show you one here. This is uh, the MS-12Q, okay, this is a great way, a great entry level way to get into the remote firing market. I can pick this guy up at uh, mortarsupply.com. For right at a hundred bucks and what it's going to do is give me 12 cues come with a little battery There's a couple things i'll show you about this here in a minute but keep in mind there are you know definitely a bunch of other firing systems out there on the market uh you know more professional grade uh, cobra makes a really good one uh you can go to mortarsupply.com or anywhere on the internet really and kind of find some of these but you know you can get you can start get started on this thing for as little as one or two cues for you know as little as 30 40 bucks even you can buy these guys on ebay but you know, I only got 12 cues. Does that mean I can only shoot 12 um, mortars? No, of course not. So I'm going to utilize, you know, the remote firing system along with stringing uh, several mortars together in our racks, and we'll talk about in a different video, uh, to get my 12 cues. So what I'm probably going to do for this year's show is run about 100 mortar uh, tubes in succession on, on Q1, and then I'm going to supplement the show on the side with, with Q2 through 12, and, and I'll probably save the last three cues for like three big cakes that I'm going to fire up at the end. So let's just kind of dive into the MS-12Q and we'll show you how this thing works. So this thing is battery operated. You can either uh, put six Duracell batteries or AA batteries in there. You can also attach um, this and, and hook it up to any 12 volt battery. You know, I would recommend this if you're using several of these and you want to do like what's called a series. This MS-12Q uh, also comes, uh, you can get it optionally with another remote that is going to show you or it will allow you to do sequence firing, meaning it'll have a, a like a half second, quarter second, one second, two second, three second, and when you hit that cue, it's going to go through all 12 cues in that time interval. The one I have here is just a manual remote, meaning I hit one, it's going to fire Q1. So, like I said, you know, one of the things you can hook this up to 12 volt. You would only need to do that um, probably if you're going to put multiple fuses in each cue, and I think this one will do up to two, maybe three if you're doing a full 12 volts. Other than that, the AA battery should be just fine for most backyard, backyard shows. One of the things you want to do when you first turn this guy on, turn the key on, is, is learn your remote. i got a new remote here. You turn this remote on here. Um, and I'm going to hold down the learn button. And this guy's ready to go. See how it's going through the cues? I hit 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And again, some of these models for a couple, you know, 20 or $30 more, you can get the succession remote. I wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, if you're going to spend more money, go ahead and upgrade to like a Cobra or, or a more professional model. But basically how this guy works is you come with what's called um, E-Fuse. Some things are called E-Match, but this really isn't E-Match. E-Match is you have to have a license to get. It's something that you actually take. Uh, you can take your mortars and actually take the, uh, the fuse that comes out with them, the black powder fuse, and take it out and insert the E-Match. This is what most people call the clip style fuse, and I don't know if you can see in there. But you opened up that clip and there's like a little arc and what's going to happen is that thing's going to flash when I hit the cue. So, um, you know, the, the professional models and if you have a professional license, you're going to be using what's called E-Match. Uh, you you got to have a license. It's not something that most consumers are going to get. But this this little what they call a clip-on fuse or a clip igniter, it is a remote firing igniter. These are one-time use. You know, you get a dozen of these depending on the length. I think this is a, just a meter or a yard, three feet or so. Um, you can get them in three meters. 
even up to nine meters. And depending on how many you get, I think 12, a dozen of this size is like four bucks from motorsupply.com. Um, the longer ones are obviously a little bit longer, but these are one time use. This guy's going to be dead after I fire this. So let me just kind of show you how it works real quick up close maybe you can see that I'm gonna put one lead and it doesn't really matter there's not a positive or negative here you just want to complete the circuit I'm gonna put one in the positive and one in the negative we have completed the circuit there and what should happen when this guy's ready to go it's armed it should be ready to go it should be lighting up here let me see if I'm getting a good connection here sometimes these little fuses are a little long or the, the, the leads are a little long and especially by the time you fill this rack up with 12 or so, you're probably going to want to double these up or you may even get your little wire cutters out and cut them because it's going to be a lot of excess and you don't want these guys touching each other because you'll have a, a short. Ain't quite long enough for me. Let me start over here again there. Let me just separate this out. Alright, okay. So what I want to get it do ready is, is, is zoom in right here on this, this clip. You can, I'm going to open it up a little bit so you can see. And what I'm going to do is attempt to fire Q1. Can you see that? That's as fast as it was. And I think the MS-12Q, let me hit it again. That's about as much as you're going to get out of this guy. The MS-12Q is programmed to go ahead and hit um, a current on this clip for 0.3 seconds. Now some people, you buy the MS-12Q from other people, they go in there and they have the circuit board retested. But stay right there. Let me grab another one of these and kind of show you how this thing works. All right, so obviously when, when you get ready to get into this kind of deal with the remote firing system, you're going to want to buy a few extra of these and test them. But you know, the day of the show, you shouldn't need any more than 12 unless you can actually run two of these in, in a queue at a time. So you can wire up two of these in once and, and you'd be actually shooting off two things simultaneously out of the same queue so with this guy you can actually queue up maybe like 12 keg so I'm gonna go ahead and pop another one of these in there and show you how it's gonna light the fuse let me bend this in there put it in Q1 again This as we're ready to go. We have we have one in there. It's green. It's ready to go. Go back to arm. I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of this uh, fuse off. And this is again from water supply. This is 30 feet of. I believe this is 30 seconds per foot that it burns. It'll say 80 to 90 seconds per meter, but it's about 30 seconds per foot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of this off so we can cut it. And I wouldn't recommend when you're getting ready to wire up your fireworks to use scissors ever. I would use wire cutters because what what, what you got going on inside of this fuse is it's basically black powder and the shearing effect could create a spark and if this is hooked up to the rest of your mortars and you're in your garage or something like that you may be running for the hills while they all blow up in your garage so be safe there the reason I went ahead and used scissors today is because they were handy and I don't have this hooked up to anything if it lights up it's just gonna fly away so let me uh, pin this thing down with a little staple gun got your little E fuse here and again this little three yard or three or one yard three foot type wire may not be what you need you know I've got a, a variety of different sizes I bought a few of these just to kind of test this unit out I've never used one just to kind of play with it once the firework come in here in a couple weeks so if you get in here what I'm gonna do is just clip this on and what we're attempting is with that arc clip you just want to take your clip and clip it on here it's close to the end and what it's gonna do is 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 that arc hopefully is gonna burn through um, the exterior part of this fuse and get down to the black power and start this baby up one thing you'll notice is this these clips just basically there's no spring load on them it just has like a little rubber band around it so if you took that rubber band out this whole thing would just fall apart so leave those on there don't don't take those off leave that on there that kind of what gives it the spring back effect there but you see I'm just gonna clip it on there kind of just make sure it's nice and tight nice and tight I'm gonna go and pin this down because these things will fly away on you and kind of walk around but it should the burn should go through there so Let's back up here. We're sure ready to go. We're armed. Basically, I'm just going to cue this up. I'm going to hit number one and hold it down, and hopefully it rock and rolls. Here we go. Three, two, one, fire.
pretty cool. You know, like I said, this is a slow, uh, slow burning fuse. This would be something that would probably queue up on my long set of racks. There it goes flying away. So that's one way, you know, definitely, you don't need this. You can definitely fuse up your show without this. I did an awesome show last year. I didn't have a, a remote detonator. But definitely this brings another level of, of, of coolness or, you know, pretty much badass factor to your show. Really pumped up about actually starting the show off for me, and I'm going to be supplementing the show. It give me the opportunity to, if I lose in the crowd or something like that, I can throw a couple more shoot shots in there. And then at the end, you know, I'm queuing up my finale, and it's going to be right on time. Last year I was a little bit off with some of the cakes, had a big flurry, and then, you know, a pause and a few more shots. But this year for sure, I'm going to queue these guys up with a really quick fuse. And when I get ready for 9, 10, 11, and 12, boom, 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 boom. So look forward to seeing that video. Uh, hopefully I'll get that posted out of the 4th of July. Um, but tune in. we got a couple more videos coming in right before uh, leading up to the, the fireworks show and the end of the 4th of July. Hopefully this will help you out, help you guys out this year. Um, one of the things about using something like the MS-12Q, it's, 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 it's definitely a cheaper model. Um, you know, Cobra models, some of the others, I mean, professional lines, you can spend three, four, five thousand uh, dollars to queue out a nice show so you know one of the things you want to do is, is this is you know it's lightweight it is cheap so it's an entry level you don't just want to like, you know, toss it on the ground beside your fireworks show um, there's gonna be a lot of debris raining down um, and another thing it's, it's kind of got a small antenna you know you kind of want to get it elevated so you know I would recommend if you are gonna use something like this put it on a center block beside your um, your mortar racks or maybe just a five gallon bucket and kind of put some two-way tape on it or, or tape it down if you can. Um, I had a couple pieces of scrap wood, a couple two-by-fours, um, and a little bit of old fencing that I had laying around in the garage, and I put this together today. Um, but this one allows it to kind of just slide in. It elevates it off the ground, so it's not just going to be sitting there getting trashed on. And it's going to get it off the ground and give us a little bit better signal reception. So, you know, I can queue this thing up from two, three hundred feet, maybe even further. So, and then the last thing, probably the day before, one of the things I forgot is to kind of cover this thing. I may just take a piece of cardboard, staple it on here, and have it kind of set over the top. That way all the firework debris uh, doesn't kind of land into it because a lot of that debris and stuff can be really corrosive on all these little circuits. And I definitely want to be able to use this thing for the years to come. Um, if we end up doing a larger fireworks show, I may end up buying two or three of these guys that I can queue up all at the same time. But, you know, if you got something to put it on, if you can build a little rack like this, if you got some spare wood laying around, you know, I'd recommend doing that as well.